Hello. In this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, sort of the culmination of all of the skills from this unit. We'll be looking at Lewis structures and shapes, and then the angles that they make, and then polarity. So there's a lot of different skills that need to be practiced on this, and it's kind of like a final stab at, at doing a lot of these different things. So um, the first thing, I give you the substance, and you have to create the Lewis structure. There are three different kinds of Lewis structures that you'll have to make. One of them is ionic. Uh, you'll know that it's ionic if it's a metal and a nonmetal. The other one is covalent. That will include two nonmetals. And then uh, sometimes we get polyatomic ions, and those look something like this ClO3- minus on the bottom of this sheet, where it has a charge associated with it, and that clues you into the fact that it is polyatomic. So I'm, I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to write out what the Lewis structures are. If you're struggling to make Lewis structures, I recommend that you go back and look at the videos on each individual type of Lewis structure or whatever type that you're um, struggling with because I have a video out there that says Lewis structures for covalent substances, Lewis structures for ionic substances, Lewis structures for polyatomics. And so go back and review those if you're struggling to make the correct Lewis structure. But other than that, I'm just going to sort of write down what they would be. Uh, so for this PBr3, uh, we end up with a phosphorus in the middle, three bromines around it. And then there's electron pairs on all of this. All right, and there's a bond there. OK, so this is what um, the Lewis structure looks like for this one. And then we have to find its shape. You look at the number of domains. It has three bonds on the central. So we're just looking at the central atom here, which is the phosphorus. It's got three bonds on it and one electron pair. So that's four, four domains. Three of them are bonding. One of them is an electron pair. And so that should give you a shape of trigonal pyramidal. Bond angles for trigonal pyramidal is 107 degrees. All right, and then this is going to be um, the thing that's kind of new with this set of problems is we're talking about the polarity. For polarity, what, what you look at is the, symmet the symmetry of the different substances. A trigonal pyramidal structure is not symmetrical because it has a pair of electrons on the top of it, if you look. And so if it's a bent structure or if it's trigonal pyramidal, it's not going to be symmetrical ever. Um, if it's tetrahedral linear or trigonal planar, then it might be symmetrical if it has all the same atoms around it. And we'll see an example of that in a minute. Um, so if something is symmetrical, then it ends up being nonpolar. But other than that, most things end up being polar because they end up having an uneven pole of electrons on them. And so uh, that's what this would be. Um, so if you're confused about that, uh, make sure you come in and ask. But that one ends up being polar. This next one here, Mg and S, that's a metal and a nonmetal, which makes, it, makes this an ionic structure. So ionic structures, what we do is we move the electrons around. Electrons are transferred. And we have a 2 minus charge on that. Um, for the shape on this one, they don't form one of the shapes like the covalent molecules do, but they do fit within a crystalline lattice structure. All right, so I recommend that you know that. Uh, there are no bond angles associated with ionic substances. And if it's ionic, that means it is definitely polar. All right. In fact, ionic is like a really extreme version of polar. Polar means you have a positively charged part of it and a negatively charged part. And if you see, like, these have full on 2 plus and 2 minus charges. So those are definitely polar. Ionic, everything that's ionic is polar. All right, so this next one, SiCl4. We've got a silicon. We've got four chlorines around it. All right. I'm going to try and move that down just a little bit. Ah. OK. So this one, um, if you look at its shape, 
you're looking again only at the central atom. It's a silicon. It's got four bonds around it, so that's four domains. All of them are bonding domains. None of them are electron pairs. That goes along with tetrahedral. If it's tetrahedral, the bond angles are 109.5 degrees. Now, something to keep in mind here, now we're going to get to this polarity thing again. I said there, there are three shapes that can be symmetrical. The three shapes are trigonal planar, tetrahedral, and linear. This one's tetrahedral. You do a check. You look at the central carbon, or sorry, the central atom. It's all chlorines around it. And so if it's all the sa same element around the central atom, any pull that they would have on the electrons ends up canceling out because of the symmetry that's involved. And so this ends up being nonpolar in the end because all of those things on the outside of the silicon, are all, they're all chlorines. And so they're all pulling on the electrons, but they're pulling in opposite directions. And they end up canceling each other out because of the symmetry that's involved. OK, this next one here, CH2Br2, it's actually similar. Looks like this. It's a tetrahedral shape. Bond angle is 109.5 degrees. All right, but this one, since the atoms around the carbon are not all the same, since we've got bromines and hydrogens, it's not symmetrical on this one. The, the poles on the different electrons would not cancel out. And so this one ends up being polar. OK, PSBR, this one, is another, um, this one is another covalent substance. So we figure out what that would look like. We end up with this as our structure. <clears throat> so um, if we look at this shape, there are three domains on it. There's a single bond, a double bond, and an electron pair on that central atom, OK, if there are three domains, two of them are bonding domains. One of them is an electron pair. It, en it ends up being bent in shape. All right, This one is the bent 117 degrees, because it has only three domains in it. And then uh, a bent structure, th this is never going to be symmetrical, because the electron pair is off to one side. And um, if you look at the general shape for bent, it, you know, um, we've got atoms pulling in different ways, and then the electron pair. And so anything that ever has an electron pair on the central carbon, or the central atom, is going to be polar. So any bent structure, really, any bent or any trigonal pyramidal structure is going to be polar. SIS2, if you make this Lewis structure, it looks like this. Look at the central atom. There are two domains on it. There's a double bond, and then there's another double bond. There's no electron pairs on the central, uh, central atom. So two domains, no electron pairs. That is linear. All right. Um, linear is one of those ones. Oh, wait, 180-degree uh, bond angles, I'll say first. But linear is one of those ones where it's a symmetrical structure, so it can end up canceling out. Um, in this case, there's sulfurs on both sides of the silicon. The sulfur is pulling the electrons away from the silicon. Um, so the one sulfur pulls the electrons to the right, and the other sulfur pulls the electrons to the left. It ends up canceling out, and this one ends up being nonpolar. ClO3 minus. This one is a polyatomic. You know that because it's got the minus on there. You have to do the whole process of finding the octets and the valence, and do the octet minus the valence plus the charge over 2. Um, that business, so look back in your notes if you forget how to do that for the polyatomic ions. But what we end up with in the end here is oxygen bound to a chlorine, bound to another oxygen, bound to another oxygen. Um, Right, 
like that. And it's got a negative charge overall. This one, uh, if you look at the central atom here, it's a chlorine. It's got four domains on it. Three of them are bonds. One of them is an electron pair. All right, that creates a shape of trigonal pyramidal. If something is trigonal pyramidal, um, well, actually, uh, yeah, it has, it has bond angles of 107 degrees. All right. Um, so for the polarity on this one, uh, if something is polar, we mean that it's got like a positive part and a negative part. If it's a polyatomic ion like this one, it's actually like this one is all negative. All right. And so it's not really precisely polar because it doesn't have a negative part and, an, and a positive part. It's all negative, all right? So it's just a negative polyatomic is what I call it to indicate that it, um, it, does have, it does have a charge to it, but it's not polar because the charge is not, um, is not like part of it positive and part of it negative. OK, for the Lewis structures on the back. This first one, CA3P2, that one is ionic. So this one is a little bit complicated. We have to try and like go back and forth. If, if you ever have an ionic substance and it has um, a lot of atoms in it, you kind of have to like stagger back and forth between them. Um, there are three calciums, so I'm going to put the calciums on the outside. So we've got CA2 plus. All right, and then we get a phosphorus. All right, that ends up having its eight electrons in the end, uh, and it's three minus. And then we have another Ca2 plus, and then another phosphorus with its eight electrons, and it's a three minus, and then another another Ca2 plus. All right, um, that's what that one looks like. This one because it's ionic. Its shape is a crystalline lattice. Again, all ionics are crystalline lattices. So um, that's the general shape it takes on. No bond angles if we're talking about ionics. Um, and then if it's ionic, it's always polar again, um, because we have these positive bits and negative bits. So if it's ionic, it's always polar. CS2S, um, this one here is another ionic substance. It's got cesiums and sulfur in it. This one actually is a little bit easier than the last one. So we've got a CS with no electrons around it because the S ends up with all the electrons in this one. Um, the CS has a plus charge, two minus, and then there's another CS over here with a plus charge. Since it's ionic again, it's going to be a crystalline lattice. No bond angles, and then it's ionic, so it's polar. And again, all ionic substances are polar. SiO2 2 minus. All right, so this one is another um, polyatomic, so we have to do the octet minus the valence plus the charge over 2, figure out how many bonds. What we end up getting in the end here is an oxygen, silicon, there's a double bond to the next oxygen. Overall, it's a 2 minus charge. So if we look at the different domains on the central atom, we're just looking at the silicon here. On the silicon, we get a single bond. We get a double bond. We get an electron pair. That's three domains. All right, so this one ends up being bent. Um, so three domains. One of them is an electron pair. That's 117 degrees. And this one, in terms of the polarity, again, it's not really precisely polar because the whole thing is negative, right? So um, we're going to say it's a negative polyatomic. I like to say that because it's not precisely, like when you say nonpolar, you think that it's not charged at all. But this is, so this is a charge. It's just the whole thing is negative. There's no positive in there. So yeah, really, I mean, it's technically nonpolar. but. 
Um, but I like to include the fact that it's a negative there, a negative polyatomic. All right, for BRBR3, BRB3, no, BBR3, it is three bromines around the outside. And then this one's weird in that the boron does not have an octet when it's in its valence structure, or is it when it's in its Lewis structure? This is trigonal planar in shape. It has 120 degree bond angles. Um, trigonal planar is one of those symmetrical shapes. You look, it has bromines all the way around it. If it's got bromines all the way around it, um, that means it's perfectly symmetrical. And if it's symmetrical, there's going to be like the, the pole and the electrons are all going to cancel out. So this one ends up being nonpolar. Last problem here. Um, for this one, we end up with a carbon in the center because it can make the most bonds. It'll triple bond to the P and single bond to the Cl. All right, on this shape, if you look at it, um, it's a linear shape because that carbon has two domains. They're both bonding domains. So it's linear, 180 degree bond angles. This one, linear, could end up being symmetrical. But if we look at the carbon, there are different things on, attached to the carbon. There's a P on one side. There's a chlorine on the other side. So it ends up being asymmetrical. If something's not symmetrical, that means the polling on the electrons is going to be different, um, which means that we're going to end up with a polar molecule here. So polarity, the whole biggest point here is that polarity has everything to do with the symmetry on a molecule. Um, it's, it's kind of confusing, but I think if I talk you through it, if you're still confused, I think you should be able to get it. So make sure that you come in and talk to me if that is still confusing you.